Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What's going on, fifth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 21. All right, y'all. So I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today. And if you're like, wait, what worksheet? Go ahead and check the link below or somewhere around this video, which will take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in this series. All right, now that you're ready, go ahead and complete number one and number two. We're talking coordinate grids today, yeah, yeah. Complete number one and number two, I want you to throw down your best as if these two questions were on the test and then come on back to get all the helpful tips and strategies that I throw your way. All right, go, and I will see you in a second. Welcome back, fifth grade. Okay, um, I apologize in this, I think last episode I was apologizing for the rain. In this episode, I'm apologizing for the time of day of which I'm recording this because it's causing a shadow to appear from my Okio cam, which I love my Okio cam. Just the lighting is not the best right now. So I'm sorry that you're picking that up, but we can still make it work, right? Rain or shine or shadows, we're gonna knock this out. All right, first let's identify the question type. I'm seeing four answer choices. So what kind of question is this? It is a multiple choice, well, well, well. All right, and I'm seeing coordinate grids. Now, in the years that I have taught fifth grade, I know it was always such a sigh of relief to get to these coordinate grids. And let's go ahead and knock this one out though. Let's, let's read it, let's mark up our text, and let's make sure that it makes sense. It's okay. Lulu is visiting Orlando, Florida. That's where I'm from, y'all. The points on the coordinate grid, that's right down here represent the locations of the places that she visits. So we have a key right there. E stands for the Orlando I, M stands for the Magic Kingdom, S is for SeaWorld, U is for Universal Studios, and Z is for the Central Florida Zoo. Okay, Lulu wants to visit the Magic Kingdom. Which ordered pair, an ordered pair has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, so which ordered pair describes this location? All right, so we need a magic kingdom, right? Let's go up and find the magic kingdom. Oh, there it is. What letter do we need to be looking for? M, letter M. So here is M right there. Now with, in order to find our order pair, we go over and then we go up. Now I'm mentioning this in fifth grade like this because you're only focusing on this quadrant right here only on positive numbers but next year in sixth grade you will have to go to know that this line right here the x-axis also goes this way negatively so it's not just over to the right it also goes to the left 
it's the, the horizontal line. And the y-axis is the vertical line. So just know that it goes up and down. But for you, over and up for this year. So Magic Kingdom, it's right here. So we're going to go over zoop, six and up how many? One, two, three, four. So over six and then up on the y, four. So which answer matches that? A sure does. None of the other ones are correct. That would be the only one. And I also want you to notice how I've marked up my text here to make sure that I'm really thinking about this problem carefully. Okay, it's a pretty simple problem, but still mark up your text to make sure that it makes sense. And now let's go ahead and check out number two. Number two has lots of words. Should we run? No. Should we hide? No, we will face the battle. Let's do it. First, let's identify the question type. We are Basically filling in the blank here, we're reading part of a statement and filling in the blank and finishing the statement. So this is an editing task. All right, now that we know what kind of question it is, let's go ahead and read it carefully, mark up our text, show our thinking, all of that. It says the location of point D on a coordinate plane is one five. That means the X axis is one and the Y is five. Select numbers to describe point D on the num on the coordinate plane for each box. Fill in the bubble before the number that is correct. All right. Point D is, I'm going to go ahead and like draw it, is how many units away from the origin in the direction of the x-axis and how many units away from the origin in the direction of the y-axis. All right. It's in order to explain this, it's actually, this is actually not a very complicated problem, but in order to explain this, I'd like to draw it out. So our origin that they're talking about is at zero, whoops, zero, 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 zero. Our origin is right here. Okay. I'll put an O for origin. And if it's one over on the X, let's say that this is one, and then it goes up to the five, one, make it smaller one two three four five that means it should be about right there right and this would be considered point d we would just refer to it as d so point d is how many units away from the origin going in the direction of the x-axis so if we're going x first how many units away do we need to go one right so it's one unit away and then if we're going up from the origin, how many units away is it? It's five, right? Five units away from the origin in the direction of the Y axis. So mark C five. This is a very wordy kind of problem, but it's not a complicated problem. You just have to break it down and make sure that it makes sense. So go ahead and make any corrections that you need to make. And if you want some more practice with coordinate grids, I will point you in the right direction right now. All right, fifth grade, so if you need some more practice with coordinate grids, I want you to check out the link below for McCar or somewhere around this video for McCarthy Math 155. Check out Unit 11, that's all about the coordinate grids. Now, in order to access the McCarthy Math 155 series, you do have to become a member, but you can totally check it out for free for seven days. So basically, you're like a member for seven days. And I encourage you to watch as many videos as you want, to print out as many worksheets as you want, to make the most use out of that of this program during your seven day free trial and of course to ask me any questions that you have so many parents and teachers and schools and districts are using this program to fill in the learning gaps to support students when they're struggling and just need a little more practice to make it click they are loving it and i think that you will too so please check it out the next link is to my how to pass the math FSA series for the same standard that we worked on today. Now the how to pass the math FSA series was the very first series that I created several years ago, back when the math FSA for fifth grade was a computer based test. It's not a computer based test for most anymore. That's why I created the math FSA boot camp series. However, it still provides great standards-based practice. So if you haven't checked it out, I really encourage you to check it out for some extra practice. So I'd love for you to follow me either on Instagram or Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And I'm also on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. In fact, if you're watching this from YouTube, could you go ahead and take a quick second to smash that like button? Not for me or to make me feel good, but to support the mission that I'm on. You see, as a teacher, I know there are so many students out there who struggle with math and I'm on a mission 
in to make it fun, make it click and make it stick for as many students as possible. Students who watch my videos tend to become more confident and understand math and actually enjoy it a lot more. So I want to reach more students to help them feel more confident with math. When you smash that like button, more students are inclined to come to my videos and therefore you are transforming somebody's life. So that is really cool and thanks for doing that. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. I mean that. You are the generation that we've been waiting for. You're going to do big things and shake it up. Watch out, world, because we have a whole new generation. That's you all who are ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness, and you always have that choice. And I cannot wait to see you all on the final episode of the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Bye, guys.